Hello people, this is George with yet another Call of Dragons video and today I decided to take a special video for you guys. It's been uh, 6 months since I have been playing this game as a 100% free to play player and I think I gathered enough experience for you guys to make a ultimate uh, beginner guide for a people uh, who are just starting the game right now or they want more guidance throughout the game because in my opinion it is really important to start the game with a good strategy and with a good strategy you're gonna follow up and you're gonna get stronger and stronger so first of all as everybody uh, whenever you are starting the game you have a choice. Uh, this game is all about choices. That's why these guides are made. Uh, whenever you are starting the game, you have a choice to pick a faction uh, which you're gonna uh, be playing throughout the game. Uh, there is three options. One is Spring, Spring Wardens, League of Order and Wilderberg. As a free-to-play player, I would, I would advise you to read the faction bonuses um, in general, Spring Warden is all about uh, fighting, player versus player. Uh, if you like generally like the theme of the elves, you can always go for it. But one of the most important things whenever you are starting the game as a new faction, you need to understand that you will get uh, the most uh, tokens of the hero, whichever faction you are starting with. So if you are starting with Spring Wardens, you're going to get Gwenwin tokens. If you are starting with League of Order, you are getting Waldir tokens. And if you are getting uh, Wilderberg, you are getting Bahar uh, tokens. So in my opinion, the best way as a free-to-play and even like pay-to-win player to start the game uh, with the best value possible for the beginning is to choose the League of Order simply because Walder is most uh, profitable and uh, one of the best uh, epic heroes in the game. And if you will get uh, free tokens by doing some quests, it's, it's always amazing. Also, you are getting the overall gathering speed and more resources never harm nobody. Regarding Spring Wardens, this faction is mostly about player versus player strategy. As you can see, you have an elixir production speed and later you're gonna go to the game. This elixir production speed will help you a lot. And of course, Legion March speed is always a good idea. You can uh, see in the faction bonuses, it's all about fighting and it's all about wars. Uh, regarding Wilderberg, it's uh, like... Um, infantry based uh, faction where you don't you don't have like the best uh, faction bonuses but uh, Wittleberg in my opinion is more for a pay to win players uh, because like you are not starting the game with the great great uh, first hero as a Bahar that's why in my opinion League of Order is a great choice that's why I always advise to start with League of Order. But uh, I started with Spring Wardens because I just like the elf theme and nothing behind that. Uh, so whenever you start the game, uh, of course, first and most important what you have is buildings. And like any in any other building game, here you all already have a choices on a, which kind of buildings you're gonna go because every building has a levels. And with every building, there is one main building. One main building is called Sacred Hall. Uh, it's for Spring Wardens. Um, like main building, this main building has a quests. Uh, you just need to follow the quests and this main building will help you to generate a lot of power and a lot of additional uh, capacities in the game. For example, um, like whenever you are upgrading your sacred hall, your main building, uh, from uh, level 11 you are getting third legion. At the start of the game you just have two legions. Uh, when you're gonna progress throughout the game, on level 17 you are getting four legions, which is amazing. And at the level 22 you are getting five legions. So 
This means that your number one priority should be to upgrade Sacred Hall as higher level as possible. Uh, there is one more building uh, which is called Alliance Center and in my opinion whenever you're gonna upgrade Sacred Hall to next level straight up try to upgrade Alliance Center uh, like your second priority and I will explain you why. Uh, Alliance Center is a like building which is helping you to decrease timers on the buildings by helping your uh, from your Alliance members. Like whenever you're gonna upgrade the building, there will be a button help, and your Alliance members can help you to decrease the time uh, which which it will be spent to finish the building. So, in order for you to finish buildings as soon as possible, the Alliance Center should be your second most important priority. So, we already have two priorities uh, in terms of building. Follow the quest, uh, upgrade the Sacred Hall, and as soon as you upgrade it your Sacred Hall, try to upgrade Alliance Center, because Alliance Center will help you to upgrade your researches, your buildings, almost everything in the game uh, while uh, your alliance members will be helping you with the help button. As you can see, I, I have 28 uh, plus 2 helps and whenever I'm just upgrading a simple building, it is like decreasing uh, by 1% as I know uh, every timer which uh, building have. Uh, regarding legion buildings, you're gonna be upgrading the legion buildings uh, for the sacred hall. Like every sacred hall of the hell has a requirements uh, on what should have, what you should do in order to have a chance to upgrade the sacred hall. So that's why I won't gonna speak uh, much about legion buildings because it's a quest line. And uh, on your quests, you're always gonna have to upgrade your legion buildings. As you can see, my quest is to upgrade my secret hall to level 25. So this is the main quest, and with this main quest, you're gonna follow and upgrade the main town. Uh, the building type, I would not uh, suggest you to upgrade everything. Uh, I would suggest you to have a strategy. And I already told you uh, which kind of strategy will be most profitable for you. Um, and if we will speak besides uh, buildings, there is another uh, way for you to increase power in this game. Uh, which is called uh, research. Um, for Spring Orders is called School of Sages. Uh, this is basically the um, uh, economy and the military uh, research tabs. Uh, and of course, uh, here are also some choices. As I said, in this game, uh, there are always some choices which you need to do. And it, like your gameplay and your strategy depends on these choices. Uh, regarding economy tree, there are like a couple of things which are uh, like primary you to do like priority in my opinion always architecture one should be done uh, scholarship one should be done because architecture is helping you to have a uh, building speed 15% scholarship is great for a research speed uh, always great to have a burst control, uh, the SP recovery, because without uh, SP you just can't do anything in the game. Uh, that's why it's important. Uh, also, if we're gonna move forward to the economy tree, uh, we have architecture 2, which is must have to do. 35% is a lot, and I would always suggest you to upgrade architecture 2 on the max. Uh, and of course supply chains one is always good because it's granting you overall gathering speed. Uh, gathering is amazing for everybody because every single update upgrade in this game costs resources and is the more gathering speed you have, the faster you are getting more resources. And of course here is again burst control 2 uh, and stamina 2 and one of the most important upgrade in the economy tree in my opinion is scholarship 2. That's like the main uh, upgrade for the economy tree as you can see I did not even continue after that because I have uh, other uh, priorities regarding the research tab. So I would suggest to max out scholarship and whenever you're gonna have a max out scholarship you are free to go to the 
military tree. Well, regarding military tree, here are more complex uh, choices because uh, military tree is helping you to get better version of your uh, legion types. Now, well, I would suggest you to like straight away like choose. Uh, the easiest pass, like for example, if you want to have a, uh, if you are a marksman player, like your priority should be at first to have at least one tier four uh, legion type. Uh, try to upgrade as fast as possible. Like these uh, four uh, legion types is like must have. As soon as possible, you need to be able to unlock every single. Uh, legion type as a t4 uh, type in this game uh, but whenever you are progressing through the game you understand that the green stuff is really easy to upgrade uh, when you're gonna progress you, you're gonna see the blue stuff is really easy to upgrade and everything uh, starts harder and harder and takes more time whenever you are upgrading your tier 4 units uh, in the military tab, there is only one kind of economy um, research, which is which is conscription, uh, which is granting you the additional training speed, and training speed will be uh, very beneficial for you in order to train as much troops as possible. This is regarding like research tab. Like I won't gonna go further because for a beginners and beginner players. You should know what you should be have a priority and what's not. In military tab, your main priority should be tier four units. Let's continue. Uh, next one should be like uh, prestige and policies. And here again, yet again, as I said, always there are some choices in the game. And in the policies tab, you already have some choices, right? Now, every single update costs prestige, and prestige is generated from a dragon trail, and I will be speaking about dragon trail later. Uh, every upgrade is cost dragon uh, prestige, and if you want to finish the upgrade um, like sooner, you should you if you want to finish the upgrade sooner, you can uh, pay some gems. Like uh, this amount of gems will be enough for you to upgrade any upgrade. But as a free-to-play player, I would not recommend you to spend gems in the policies. Regarding the most important policies which you need to be focusing on is always uh, military expansion. Uh, 1, military expansion 2 and military expansion 3. In my opinion, these three uh, policies are most important because they are granting your legions more capacity. Uh, whenever you are starting the game, you want to have a higher number of units in your legion, and the best way uh, for you to get the more more cap capacity for your legions is to upgrade the military expansions. Second most important uh, aspect in the policies tree, in my opinion, is uh, hospitals. Regarding hospitals, there is you all, always get like two choices. Like for example, here, I had like four choices: medic recruitment, medic training, medicine stockpile, and medical supplies. I would always and always suggest to upgrade daily elixir production rather than resource healing. Uh, simple fact: resource healing takes a lot of resources in order to heal your troops. And daily elixir production is kind of free resource, free healing for your uh, armies. That's why, like, choice is pretty simple. You are every time you have this choice, you are picking daily elixir production, or here you are picking daily elixir production speed. And later on, you already have uh, like in the end the last uh, choices here again daily elixir production and here again elixir production speed so like you are in order for you to progress uh, fine in this game you need to uh, calculate on which kind of upgrades you should be spending your resources and trust me uh, resources are not good if you just spend them to heal your army that's that's the main reason why these policies exist to help players to not spend uh, much resources and to spend elixirs in the game uh, 
Uh, we already spoke regarding buildings, we already spoke regarding uh, research, we already spoke regarding policies. Now, one of the most important aspects uh, of the game is VIP shop. And of course, as a beginner player, you need to understand that this is really, really important. Uh, I would suggest every player, uh, especially a free-to-play player, to invest uh, as much gems as possible in order to, to them to uh, get to level 8. Like, as you can see, uh, every level is granting you new stuff. For example, on level 5 you are getting training speed. But most important aspect here is, of course, if you will be able to get level 8, you are getting second research queue, which means you will be able to research two upgrades at the same time. Also, on level 8, you will be able to get one legendary token of your choice. This is also very important, but most uh, important and most profitable thing in this uh, VIP shop and VIP membership level is uh, second research queue. This is like main priority for everybody. Trust me, you will be happy, you will get more power and sooner and you're gonna be able to upgrade more researches with this second research. Uh, don't pay, uh, don't use gems on anything. At first, use all your gems to get level 8. After level 8, like everything depends on you, if you want to continue, feel free to continue, and, like you, you can't miss from the uh, buffs of level 9 or level 10 or level 11, but like priority is level 8 in order to get second research queue. Uh, regarding like second building queue, like I would suggest uh, everybody uh, regarding like gem spending in the game, uh, like for a free to play players, it's really hard to get a big amount of gems. We are like collecting whole season and we are cautious regarding the gems. That's why I think uh, spending on VIP membership level in order for you to get a level uh, 8 uh, in order to get level 8 with the second research queue is really amazing and uh, should be the number one priority regarding sp spending gems in the game uh, there is second uh, important aspect which you need to unlock i think it costs 3000 or 5000 gems in order for you to uh, unlock second builder queue it's like same uh, importance as second research queue, right? You will be able to build two buildings at the same time and you will be able to research two uh, researchable items in it together, right? So regarding gem spending, level 8 for uh, VIP membership, you need to be able to get second builder. So these two will be like most spendable uh, gem uh, things in the game for the beginner players. If you already uh, got level 8 and if you already got second builder, then you can spend gems on some heroes or maybe some artifacts or maybe like depends if you want to finish your speed up and you want to get more speed ups like after you have like second research queue and second building uh, queue you can spend gems on whichever thing you need. This is my honest opinion. Uh, regarding like uh, prestige, we, we spoke about prestige and how you can spend prestige in policies, but now we can speak uh, how you can generate uh, prestige in the game. This is a dragon trail. Um, every season this uh, map is being reseated and this is like challenges for your army to defeat some enemies and you are getting uh, prestige you are getting dragon glass and you are getting some XP. Uh, we already know how to spend prestige in the policies. Uh, regarding dragon glass, here is a little store where you can spend your dragon glass. And in my opinion, like choice is pretty obvious. You should always get in this token, like collect uh, 20,000 dragon glass in order to get one token. It's pretty easy and pretty simple always and always choose this and like whenever you are moving forward through the 
Dragon Trail map, you are getting better and better rewards. Uh, and the rewards, you are helping your prestige, you are getting Dragon Glass uh, coins, and you are getting more in these coins with this Dragon Glass. This is pretty simple. Uh, I won't gonna spend too much time talking regarding Dragon Trail, like you just move forward, you are getting rewards. It's like free to play friendly content for a players. Uh, regarding, like, uh, honestly, most important thing in the game. Uh, it's heroes, right? In the in this game, there is like couple of type of heroes. Uh, one is marksman, and marksman hero can only get marksman units. Uh, there is mages, and mages can only get uh, mage units in their legion. Uh, also, there are infantry, same only infantry, cavalry, only cavalry, uh, usable for cavalry, and. Uh, yeah, there are some gatherers. These gatherers can use every single type of legion, doesn't matter. Uh, gatherers are one of the most important uh, heroes in the game because they are helping you to gather resources. And remember, try to level up gatherers because higher level uh, your gatherers, more resources you are getting. But in my opinion, uh, here, as you can see, you already have a lot of choices, right? But um, until we're gonna decide which kind of heroes we will upgrade for fighting, just straight up focus on your gatherers. These gatherers will help you throughout the game. There won't be time when gatherers won't be important for you. That's why I will always suggest you to get the gatherers level up. And whenever your gatherers are level up, this means that you are getting resources every day uh, and you are upgrading your uh, power. Regarding fighting heroes, um, I would always suggest everyone to, like especially free-to-play players, to decide which kind of gameplay they like. Uh, if you want to be a marksman player, I would suggest to pick uh, like two legendary heroes and focus only on them. Uh, at first, like for example myself, I focused only on Kinara, that's why my Kinara is the best hero I have. And you can see I'm free to play player and I don't have any legendary hero awakened. Uh, and also, it is really hard for everybody, especially free to play players, to get these medals in order to have a uh, better and more stars. These stars are helping you to unlock these skills, right? Uh, on every hero, uh, there is main skill. Uh, first skill is always most important, and first skill is always the skill which is dealing the damage. That's why I would always suggest, until unlocking uh, the other skills, other uh, like second skill, third skill, and fourth skill, uh, unlock first skill on the five five level, and whenever your first skill on any hero is five level, then you can uh, unlock other skills because. Priority is always first skill. And yeah, if you just choose the marksman, choose like two legendary uh, marksman heroes and focus only on them. If you chose uh, mages, to choose two mage uh, heroes and only um, try to max them out. Because if you're gonna spend some XP on uh, like, for example, Nika, if you're gonna spend uh, XP on Thea, like none, none of your heroes will, will be upgraded in the full potential and you will get lost. Like you won't gonna have at least one legion which will be capable of fighting and will be strong. If you don't have at least one good legion, you will be struggling in the future fights, in the future behemoths, and like in any content, even at the events. So decide your uh, your type of gameplay. Whenever if you will decide that, like there are like easy choices like you know, Nico and Kinara. If you don't have Kinara, uh, Gwenwin and Nico is always great. Gwenwin is amazing uh, epic hero. If you want to go for mages, Walder and Welin is amazing hero pair. If you want to go for cavalry, uh, Emrys and Bakshi is always amazing. And yeah, uh, like choose your style and stick to it, right? Get at least one good legion uh, for you to be relevant in some fights. Uh, regarding like uh, talents, 
every hero has a uh, talent. Talents uh, means that like there is a additional passive skills which will be granted for your legion and to your heroes. And every hero has a uh, three tree. Uh, and every play player should decide on which tree they want to upgrade is their heroes. Uh, there are like priorities, of course. I would start with gatherers. Uh, regarding gatherers, remember whenever you are gathering with your gatherers, at the same time you are getting XP. Uh, it's all about Earth Grace. Like you, you are getting. A I'm getting 12,000 XP per day while I'm gathering. So uh, this is Earth Grace Zero, and whenever you are moving forward with the gathering tree, here is Earth Grace again, and it is giving us 20,000 XP per day. So uh, now you understand why it is so important for you to level up, because one level means one point to spend on a talent tree. So while you are leveling up, uh, like unlock your talents. For gatherers, it is important to uh, upgrade Earth Grace as soon as possible because it will be helping you to level up them uh, faster. Now, regarding regarding like fighting heroes talents, again everybody has like three choices. Um, I already have some guides regarding some of the heroes. Uh, I don't have every of them, but I'm sure you will be able to uh, find the information about every single uh, talent and every single talent tree in the game but if you are just learning yourself you can like easily read like overall attack is giving you two percent legion uh, attack and uh, like try to max this style with your gameplay because you are the one who should be having fun and like try to get used to the gameplay and try to convert the talents to your great gameplay so this is like levels are giving you talent points, you are spending talent points, you are upgrading skills of your heroes. Um, all the time the priority should be your number one uh, skill, which will be dealing damage. And like important aspect, uh, like whenever you have a legion, you have primary hero and you have deputy hero. Uh, only primary hero's talents are workable in the Legion and deputy talents does not really work. So if you like, for example, I have uh, Nico and Kinara. Nico is my primary, Kinara is my secondary. And as a secondary hero, Kinara's talents does not really matter. What matters is Nico's talents. And that's why Nico's talents, I, whenever I'm choosing talents, I'm more most cautious about primary hero's talents. Uh, this is like hero's tab. I'm, I'm sure you understand the like main idea how to prioritize things. Uh, and we will continue speaking regarding hero stuff. And it is really important to know that heroes has artifacts. Uh, regarding artifacts, uh, this is like... A new feature for the game, for the builder games. Uh, these artifacts, like every artifact, has a mm, uh, like uh, legion type description. For example, Phoenix Eye is a magic artifact. Uh, Shadow Blade is marksman artifact. So, uh, like, it's easy to understand when if you are a marksman player, like, choose to play with marksman artifacts. But, like, in general, I can help you out on uh, to decide which one are good. Whenever you are starting the game, it's the first, like, of course, Heart Piercer is, like, main and important choice. Uh, the best epic artifact in the game currently. Second choice for marksman is the uh, Bomb Flinger. Now, if we will move up uh, for the legendary one, I think Shadow Blades is amazing. Uh, if you will go here, uh, uh, like only Shadow Blades is the purchase all gettable in this shop, so we won't gonna speak more about other stuff. If we want to go to the cavalry uh, artifacts, I think regarding cavalry, like Blade of the Reproach is for the epic uh, ones and. Uh, with the legendary one, there is a big choices. Kingslayer is amazing. Strollland Blade is great. Storm Arrows can be usable. So for cavalry, you have more uh, legendary choices than epic. 
uh, if you want to go with infantry, uh, for infantry the epic artifact is a butcher's blade. Uh, for legendary one it's a dragon rift and um, spring of silence. Um, like generally artifacts are like additional uh, items to get your legion stronger. Here are some stats. Uh, every artifact has a usable skill uh, and every skill is seen here so it won't be hard for even for a beginner player to understand what these artifacts like generally do uh, and remember oh like every artifact can be uh, like equipable uh, on any hero so like for marksmen we already spoke like shadow blade is one of the best marksman artifact currently in the game now, this is regarding like artifacts and one of the most important aspects why we are doing all this thing is to generate more power and power is needed for you to get in a best possible alliance alliance uh, my friends are like most important aspect of the game because if you like the rewards you are getting tons of rewards as a free to play player you are getting gems and speed ups if your alliance members are spending some money in the game or like even defeating some forts you are getting rewards uh, here are some store if you are like generally active in your alliance you are clicking some helps and you are helping your alliance to building towers you are getting these uh, alliance tokens and you can exchange some alliance tokens uh, with the speed ups uh, with the uh, wood and the resource boosts or even territorial relocation uh, also in alliance tab there is a merit shop uh, merit is uh, whenever you are defeating enemy in the battlefield you are getting merits and merits has its own shop in alliance tab like slowly you understand why alliance is uh, like one of the most important aspect of the game right like besides all the rewards and besides all the free stuff you are getting from here alliance is all about fun is all about your family is all about the members who are helping you to progress throughout the game and this game is about a war game don't forget uh, it's easy to lo get lost in the game because you have so many choices regarding buildings regarding legions regarding uh, art research like policies heroes but don't forget this game is of, about fighting it's uh, a war game uh, you are doing all the research and all the upgrades in order for you to be stronger in the battlefield and if you are not in a good alliance uh, like you aren't gonna have fun in this game this is why i think uh, alliance is the most important aspect of the whole game uh, and yeah if we are if we spoke regarding wars it is important to speak um, regarding legion types well, you already understood there is like marksmen, cavalry, infantry and mages, but every faction has a special unit. Uh, for Spring Wardens, this special unit is a melee cavalry flying hero. Uh, flying means that it can fly uh, throughout any terrain of the map, like you can move anywhere in the map. This is like the main advantage uh, for the flying units. Uh, and if we we can compare to the other factions like spring wardens have a, a forest eagles which are flyers and melee cavalry uh, league of order has a mage range flying another reason why uh, league of order is better for a beginner than anything else and wilderberg has a marksman again flying unit and ranged so this uh, special unit like it depends on your gameplay if you like like eagles you can choose to play with spring wardens but uh, like regarding like any other aspect like unit advantage system is all about damage it's not uh, describes the real time uh, wars like if we're gonna speak only about damage then infantry is countering uh, cavalry cavalry is countering mage marksmen marksmen is countering mages and mages are countering infantry uh, this is what i wanted to speak because uh, 
Uh, I have already been playing this game six months and I gathered a lot of experience throughout the game. And I hope this beginner guide will help you guys who like for people who just started the game or for people who are struggling to prioritize stuff, feel free. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.